Right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting of the Education Committee, 6 p.m. on the 1st of April to order. And Commissioner Lambert, give us our invocation, please. Yes, sir. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight uh, humble and grateful that we get to, to be here and, and do the county's business. Um, God, I pray that we not only do their business, but all, ultimately we do your work and your will. Um, God, I pray over this table and every person sitting around it, the people that are in the audience and also those watching online and, and those that are, uh, don't even care, God, that we uh, just all do whatever we can each and every day to honor you. God, I pray over each student in our school system and uh, that we all keep in mind whatever happens tonight has a direct impact on each and every one of their lives and their families. God, we love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can I get a motion for the approval of the agenda? So much. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Approval of the minutes for February 5th, 2024. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, recognition of the public. First up is Kay Brooks. You'll state your name and your address, please. <clears throat> My name is Kay Brooks, and I live at 123 Trousdale in Hendersonville. I'm here to urge you to vote against the resolution opposing Governor Lee's Education Freedom Act. To begin with, I'll assume the resolution is referring to House Bill 1183 and Senate Bill 503. These bills are still in the middle of being hotly debated, and amendments are still being worked through. Other than the gross generalizations included in the resolution, you don't know what you're actually voting against. According to State Senator John Ludberg, Senate Education Committee Chair. The House version says you can take the money to a private or a charter school, which is a public school, and the Senate version says only another public school. This is not the death blow to public schools which the resolution seems to tout. Going through the resolution, let's start with the constitutional requirement of a system of free public schools. The Constitution doesn't define that system. Opponents of school choice would have you believe that the system can only be something like the Sumner County Schools public schools, but in reality, it can include other options. A system almost always includes subsystems. This resolution mentions the usual boogeyman of not having adequate state funding. Adequate is never defined and is always used as an excuse for the failure of the public school system. If Senator Lundberg is correct and most of these parents will choose other public schools, what's really the problem? The assertion that the Sumner County, School, Sumner County Board of Education is charged with governing all students is completely false. They only have authority over students enrolled in their system. They have no authority over those otherwise educated. The mention of serving economically disadvantaged is used to allege that only wealthy families will benefit from any choice program. The truth, the truth is that the biggest proponents of vouchers, charters, and other options are low-income parents whose children are trapped in poor performing or ill-fitting schools and they don't have the financial resources to escape. Despite the assertion in this resolution that the Sumner County School System services all students, the reality again is they only service students who are enrolled. Let me also mention that the whereas regarding the number of staff members should not be a consideration. Is Sumner County Schools a jobs program or a means to ensure students are educated? Further, the resolution alleges that ed education savings accounts would disrupt local control of education. This is protectionist language that does not ensure the actual education of children, which should be the goal. Further, there is no more local control than a parent. Why would you deny parents that control? To conclude, as long as the participants have informed consent, options that benefit children should be allowed and encouraged this body is not charged with protecting public schools. I suggest the commission stay in its lane and remain silent on school choice. Thank you. Next is Kevin Baker. Again, state chairman, <coughs> Kevin Baker, 424 AB Wade Road. Um, we've got a variety of, of concerns and issues. Um, we're gonna we're gonna spend 1.7 to $2 million on renting bleachers when in this resolution to, to oppose the voucher program, 36.7% of our students are coming from economically disadvantaged backgrounds, yet we're able to spend $1.7 to $2 million on 
renting bleachers. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like our priorities are really, really out of whack here. Uh, it's especially in, um, I, I might step over the line here a little bit, but we're gonna spend $1.7 million on renting bleachers. We haven't resolved the runoff issue at Liberty Creek. Now you'll say, well, why is that relevant here? Because of the, tra the traffic issue that we had. You think you got a traffic issue now, when that dam breaks on Mr. Jones's property and it floods out Upper Station Camp Creek Road, you ain't gonna get to any schools, you ain't gonna get to any of it. So I'd like to see some resolution here to talk about funding that and getting that cast in stone. We've heard talk about we're gonna do it, we'll put it in paper, put it on paper. Um, I also am, am concerned about the, the voucher program, uh, not from the standpoint that, that it's not a good idea, um, but we're gonna oppose it when we don't even really know what it says yet. That's just crazy to me. Um, we, we, we really need to just let the, the state legislature do their work, and then if we don't like it. Um, but this has become so politicized now, it's just ridiculous. Um, that's all I got to say, thank you. Thank you. Lastly, Stephen King. <coughs> uh, Stephen King, um, 123 Winland Circle in Goodlettsville. Um, I also spoke to Mr. Jones and his property, and I think that's something we can talk about at the school board. His, you know, his, his property is getting flooded, but that's, a, that's not what I'm here to talk about. Uh, I'm here to speak on Budget Amendment 2, the rent, renting of the bleachers uh, for our schools. Uh, we voted on a scenario uh, for renting bleachers that I believe offers the best guarantee that we'll be able to have bleachers in place to meet our needs, uh, or to meet the needs of our schools, not only for uh, fall athletics, but also for uh, Henderson Hills graduation in May, and I think there's some events at Beach as well in the spring. And uh, some other scenarios were cheaper, uh, but the plan that we approved, I believe, uh, has the greatest guarantee and the least amount of risk. Uh, in our discussion at the board, uh, we felt that it would not be a good idea to have bleachers brought in, uh, set them up, take them down, um, have them brought back, staged again, and set up again. Personally, that makes me very uneasy. I think um, I have some anxiety about that. I'm worried about that uh, because we only have one vendor on, on this. And I would hate for something to, to happen that could jeopardize us getting those bleachers back uh, if they should go away. And, um, and also waiting to the back half of July to, uh, to set up the bleachers. To me, I feel that's just a little bit too late in the game. And we're cutting it really close. Should there be any, there's really no room for error in my opinion, if we wait until July to set up bleachers. And, um, you know, we had a situation last fall uh, where uh, some bleachers were delivered to Beach and uh, there, were some, there was some situation where the co-op co purchasing fell through. And the, um, uh, I think Andy Brown had to go out and tell that, that uh, those, those guys setting those up that they had to take them down and they had to remove them. And that caused all kinds of uh, things being said on social media. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is we just didn't have the, the funding wasn't approved uh, by the controller, I think. That's just one example. And those bleachers actually ended up in Mississippi. And just by, by a stroke of luck, there were some other bleachers available that once we got our purchasing uh, all figured out, there were some bleachers available and they were able to deliver those to Beach, but we were we were really cutting it close. I mean, it was, you know, it was pretty pretty stressful there. And, you know, the last thing we want to be in is, is in a rush uh, to find bleachers should there be any problems. So uh, we definitely don't want Murphy's Law getting in the way, and so, you know, for us at the school board, a majority of us thought it would be best to just get them in while we can, uh, get them set up, get it done, get them set up in May, let the schools use that extra time over the summer to prepare their facilities for the fall uh, for their athletic programs and then everyone has peace of mind uh, there's no worrying about well man are we going to you know, get these back or they are, are the bleachers going to be set up uh, we're going to go into this knowing that they are they're there they're set up they're ready to go and that's peace of mind i think our, our community needs i know my constituents uh, would like to have that as well and, uh, and again, let, and also let's not put any further anxiety on our, on our schools, on our, 
our coaches, our athletic staff, and our, our students. So, uh, so I'm asking you guys tonight to vote yes on Budget Amendment 2. So thank you. <coughs> okay. I have no report. Uh, is there a report from the county mayor? No report, Mr. Chairman. And a report from the director of schools. Just a couple things. Uh, good news. Um, Liberty Creek sewer connected, flushed, mm -hmm. operational. We didn't have a ribbon cutting or anything for it. But, uh, <laughs> maybe we should have had a ceremonial first flush, but it's um, it's uh, it, it's working. And hallelujah, we're going a long, long, crazy process on that. So I appreciate everybody's patience. That's working. Um, you know, I'll, I'll just, just in terms of my report, it's not really an agenda item, but I was able, after the Planning Commission, uh, when the Liberty Creek Flat was approved, I was able to talk to uh, Mr. Jones and some of the other neighbors, and I think we'll be able to, you know, the just so you, we're all on the same page, the, um, you know, if you go by the, the engineering metrics, there's less water coming off the hill than there was before, and it's, it, like, the contractor has basically met what the contract says, so I can't force Biskin to do something that's in the contract correctly based on what they signed up for. But there's a problem that needs to be addressed for Mr. Jones. So now that we've got the sewer connected, the plat registered, we'll be able to do some work to try to um, alleviate the pressures on his on his pond, on that retainage pond. And then I've already talked to um, I've already talked to Mr. Um, Ellis because there's a there's a there's another situation with the road. The water has to make three right hand turns, and so. There's some work that uh, needs to be done there. So hopefully we'll be able to get a, I don't know an exact timeline yet, but now that we getting the sewer operational uh, helps tremendously on us being able to address some of the other needs out there. Because we're gonna do our best to be a good neighbor to the people around the, around the school community. Um, Mr. Jones also wanted the wolf to stop howling on Friday night football games. Uh, the wolf is probably gonna stay. Uh, so, uh, you know, anybody lives around the high school football stadium, there are a few, uh, there are a few noises that become part of life on Friday nights, but uh, you know it's only five to seven weeks a year. But uh, and I want to thank uh, Schmidt um, with Sebastian's missing. I appreciate the work that you've done to keep that loading in the algorithms and stay up on the front and the prayer prayer vigils and everything else. So th thanks a lot. For well, thanks for uh, you were at the beach uh, vigil. We appreciate it too yes, for your words. Thanks, yes sir. And we'll continue to remember that family in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you, sir. Okay, there is no old business. The new business, we have the budget amendments that for, are for uh, information only. Then we'll go to budget amendment number two. I would uh, entertain a motion for discussion on budget. Motion amendment. to approve. Second. Was that second? Okay. All those in favor? Mr. Chairman. Aye. Oh. Appreciate that. Um, page 72 is talking about Hendersonville High and Portland. Um, I'm kind of concerned about what we're talking about here just because I don't know other than what I'm reading. A 12 foot by 16 foot single slope wood shed to serve as a press box. Two platforms be located behind the home side of bleachers with a press box installed on each platform. What are we, what are we really talking about? 3,000 pounds? up in the air on a platform. I don't understand what we're doing there. Motion to suspend. Yeah, we'll do second, third, third, all you. Aye. Aye. So they can, uh, Mr. Rogers, they can, when they're building the bleachers out, they can scaffold that so it's not like you know, 1980, where sometimes we put things up on stilts and just put kids up there to film without much safety concern. Uh, basically, we the, still have that, by the way, at the south end of the field. Yeah. So it's 2024 relevant. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're kicking footballs at them. Yeah. Um, but um, but basically, this would be attached to the back of the bleachers. It would be scaffolded um, as part of the bleacher install. So they will scaffold a space to put that on top of, and it'll function as a temporary press box. We're actually purchasing those, so we will have those structures at the end. So when they take them down, we'll be able to use those for press boxes, I mean, excuse me, concession stands or dressing rooms or things like that across the county. They're well, we, pretty nice storage buildings. Mr. Chairman, yeah. we don't have any bleachers there now, so they're gonna attach this to the temporary bleachers? Mm -hmm. when, they, when they build the temporary bleachers, like 
when they it's like a giant erector set when you watch them build them it's all metal and reinforced they're actually we learned last year at beach that the beach high school student section jumps a lot so the bleachers that we had last year were not built for a football crowd they were built for you know golf, golf. clapping and stuff right. like that not not beach nation and jumping around so they actually are putting extra scap extra scaffolding under to provide more support they come out every week or two and check to make sure the, ma the maintenance and everything's on it so they will build a scaffolding on the back of those rental bleachers to hold these facilities temp these uh, press temporary press boxes as part of the overall construction process when they come in this is hard to visualize mr langford the three thousand pounds sitting there with a lot of grading that's already been done yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's connected to, like, I mean, they're going to have engineers looking. I mean, it's engineered and everything. It's not. Dr. Langford, do we, do we get any um, insurance money back on this part of the bleachers? We will on the beach visitor side. So back in the fall, they gave us a $50,000 advance. Since we opened, the day that we opened the biz and the school board approved the uh, rental bleachers, uh, what's before y'all tonight? Uh, we were able to send that to the insurance company and they will give us another check i don't know the amount yet i just got an email today from the insurance company um, to cover part of the the rental cost for beach high school for the visitor side remember the insurance claim is only for the visitor side at beach because that's what collapsed the the parts that were the parts that were condemned by the structural engineer are not subject for insurance gotcha. Thank you. does this include our Restroom facilities too, Dr. Lakeford, or has that already been done by the county? It, it does not because the Portland restroom facilities are being built right now okay. by maintenance. So y'all will have an actual permanent bathroom facility. Uh, Hit Beach, we're going to have to rent. We don't have that okay. yet. We'll have to rent uh, bathroom facilities for Beach that are handicapped accessible and way easier to get in than last year. I have a question. Do you suppose that you will have to rent lynchers in May of 25 again? No. I don't think we'd be able to because if we start construct when we start construction, they're gonna they're gonna fence in those areas. Okay. There won't be any access to it. So hopefully we'll be done or close to done in May of 2025. Assuming the weather is right. It's okay. a lot. All right. Any further questions? I'm sorry to extend it. Okay. We'll bring it back under the rules. Uh, so we have a motion for approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, next thing we have is the resolution for opposing Governor Lee's Education Freedom Act. I have a motion for discussion. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Okay, so floor's open. So I agree, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, I'm not even just running off at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts to this. Obviously, you have the House side and the Senate side. But I guess, you know, I, I see it all different ways. And I was on the way to work, or excuse me, on the way to the meetings this afternoon. And, radio station I was listening to was talking about this very bill and so I had some thoughts running through my head if, if a parent moves a child from one school to the other you know how do we as a county track that school the school population the overpopulation of the schools and all that that's another story for another day but however funding uh, we all know funding is based on attendance and numbers if there's a huge exodus I guess from public schools it goes to charter schools or private schools. What does that look like for the county? You asking me? Well, yeah, I mean, I direct my question to the chair, so. Well, uh, I had tried to schedule William, Lam uh, William uh, Slater, but the thing is, you know, they're, they're in session. And as, as you stated also earlier, there's two different bills out there. Senate bill, House bill, coming from two different angles. I tried to get him. He said that the only time he's available from 6 to 7 is, is on the 3rd of April or the 5th of April, which is a Friday, and, and the 12th of April, which is a Friday. And 
I, this was after I had already finalized the agenda and, and set the date. So um, I, did, I just do not see how we can make an intelligent resolution here when we don't know what the, the bill is going to be myself. I mean, I, I'm just going to agree, completely agree with, with what has been stated a, a, several times. I mean, I, I've got a lot of questions, but without knowing what the what the uh, what's going to come out of the state, I, I'm at no position to to say I'm in favor or against it. So, uh, I definitely won't be able to support opposing it um, at this point for sure. I did. I talked to Senator Hale this weekend, Saturday morning, and he said they have a lot of work to do on it to get together. So I think it, I, I personally think we're a little premature on it, but we don't know what, what it's going to look like. But exactly. I agree. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, sir. years ago when I was, years and years ago when I was director of schools, <laughs> I, uh, I started the open enrollment uh, program for Sumner County, which allowed application to various different schools throughout the county. And uh, I, I think I, th this is just when vouchers were being talked about, and I think I surprised a lot of people when I said I was totally unopposed to the vouchers, uh, merely because uh, to me it seems equitable that if, if I'm paying my taxes to send my children to public schools, which I did, uh, and someone else is paying taxes to send to help send my children to public schools, and yet they're having to send theirs to uh, an umbrella school or home school or whatever. I just uh, somehow in my mind, it, it is just appropriate and fair and reasonable to think that if you're spending your tax money on education and you so choose to do something else in order to educate your children, that should be allowed. Uh, that's the only reasonable thing, I think. I'm not concerned about, or I'm not too concerned at this point about whether the State Department of Education will be able to distribute the money fairly and so forth. Uh, I'll tell you, they they have always uh, been able to work out those kinds of uh, arrangements and programs. But I certainly wouldn't uh, step out and oppose anything unless there was something in there that uh, was at the grassroots of my belief. And my belief is that we should be as fluid as possible in how to educate our children. I, I, I have three. I have a granddaughter that's in public schools at Hendersonville High School and there could not be a better education. She loves the band and she's a good student. And then I have three grandchildren in Oak Ridge who are in an umbrella uh, homeschool program and they are receiving a superior education and are very, very smart children. Um, I, I, I'm not opposed to, uh, I couldn't be opposed to working in this, on this. Now, I, I know MNPS had open enrollment for a long time. And, you know, we, I think it went on for about, while I was there, for about 17 years or so while I was still teaching. And the only, only issue that I had with it was a lot of times those students were late. They were tardy to class. but. Other than that, uh, you know, they went where they wanted to go, and, and so on. That's the only issue I have with it. Sometimes they just couldn't get there on time. <clears throat> Is there any other further discussion on this? Okay, we'll have a motion to approve. I guess it dies. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. <laughs>